Crowned the birthplace of the Syrian revolution, Dara was an opposition stronghold for years. The city lies in a strategic and sensitive region near the Israeli and Jordanian borders. For years, Iranian-backed militias allied to Bashar al-Assad have been trying to take the area by force. But a Russian-brokered deal back in 2018 kept the city mostly quiet. That was until this summer, when things started to turn violent again. to discuss why Dara has become so crucial, joining me now from Oxford is Samuel Romani. He is a regular contributor to the Washington Post and Foreign Policy and from Strasbourg, France, Yahya al Aridi. He is the spokesperson of the Syrian Negotiation Commission, which represents the Syrian opposition at peace talks. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. Yahya, what is the latest in Dara and have hostilities abated? Well, the latest situation is that uh, there is an agreement uh, between the regime and uh, the people of Dara, uh, the so-called Dara al-Balad, and uh, there was one before it, and there was a third one even before that, and every time the regime uh, just cancels uh, the whole thing and starts uh, uh, shelling. Mm -hmm. This is the situation. So, um. Samuel, what's the significance of Dara other than it's being the birthplace of Syrian revolution and how Dara is different than other opposition-controlled regions? So uh, Dara was recaptured by the Assad regime in early 2018, but there was always a consistent low-lying insurgency that's really been taking place ever since then, even though the rebels did surrender their heavy and light weaponry. And uh, there's extensive involvement in Dara of Russia and Iran, yes. but now increasingly of Turkey, which is acting as a potential uh, channel for the movement of people from Dara to northwestern Syria and a, and a facilitator of that. Um, there's also a situation, too, where there are uh, several de-escalation zones, 40 escalation zones in Dara that are located, and the Assad regime is effectively occupying them and besieging the area. So there's a number of factors at play. Hmm. So, yeah, yeah, we know that Syria has been quiet for a while. What could you tell us about the timing of this offensive and why Assad is focusing on that region? Is there any strategic importance to that? Well, Dara, uh, along with the, the uh, Qunaitra, which is part of the uh, Syrian-occupied Golan Heights, mm -hmm. along with Sweda, this is the southwest of Sweda, which is close to Israel. And this is uh, one part of importance, well, uh, one essential importance for this part of Syria. Another thing is that it is the uh, the crossroads or the gate to the Gulf region, and uh, the presence of uh, uh, Iran and uh, uh, Russia and the regime. They all, along with the regime, they all want to present their creden credentials to the Israelis. Mm -hmm. uh, the regime uh, historically uh, tried hard to protect the Israeli northern borders 
uh, in order to survive. Uh, the same thing applies to Iran, which is, always claims that it is the head of uh, the resistance and steadfastness against Israel, and this is just sheer propaganda. Yeah. At the same time, there are special relationships between Russia and Israel, and it, uh, it, it is so keen on keeping the Israeli border, as they say, uh, safe and relations with Israel good. Yes. That's why the 2018 accord was signed in Dara, and it was broken by the regime and Iran. So um, how has this offensive, Samuel, hurt Russian assurances, as Yahya mentioned, to Israel and the United States that it would restrain Iranian-backed rebels um, from expanding their influence in this region? Do you believe that um, Russia has failed a bit? So uh, shortly after the uh, Dara fell to the Assad regime and the Iranian presence there became clear, you started noticing some statements from Russia, including from Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, either talking about the need for the Iran pro Iranian militias to be completely expelled or, at the very least, the threat to them to be mitigated. So, over the past three years, Russia has really framed itself as a sort of guarantor that it can use its influence and it can use its close relationship with Iran as sort of a bargaining chip to prevent Iranian proxies from attacking Israel. But now the uh, intense involvement of pro-Iranian militias there, which Russia does not seem to have any leverage over or any control over, seems to undermine those guarantees. So mm -hmm. it is a credibility issue for the Russians as they seek to balance positive relations with both the Israelis and the Iranians at the same time. So, Yahya, how could this latest um, wave of violence could impact the Astana process as well as um, bilateral relations between Iran and Russia? Well, uh, on the surface, there, 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 there seems to be some sort of conflict between Iran and Russia, mm -hmm. especially in terms of interests. Uh, the Iranian one is an ideological one, you know, uh, the so-called the Shia uh, Krasa, uh, that extends from Beirut up to uh, Qum or Tehran, Tehran. Now, this is very important for Iran, and uh, the interests of the Russians are uh, of a different kind in, in, in Syria. It is a comeback of Russia to the international arena. That's in one way, uh, just taking Syria as a playground uh, for that. Now, uh, back to the importance of this particular region with its closeness to Israel and the importance of that to the United States, we understand that the any offensive in that part in that in that part of, of Syria is going to have all sorts of consequences. Mm -hmm. Now, a, another another dimension of this is just related to the northwest of of, 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 of Syria, uh, the across the the, uh, the Turkish border, and this is also related to what is going on in one way or another to uh, what's going on in in Dara. So um, where does this leave Israel, uh, Samuel? Should Tel Aviv be worried or this latest offensive gave it a needed excuse to stoke up tensions with Tehran? Well, certainly the uh, appointment of Naftali Bennett, who, who replaced Benjamin Netanyahu as prime minister, certainly would point to uh, an escalation of Israeli action in Syria, because he has basically advocated a policy of maximum attrition over the past 18 months, effectively not just trying to contain the Iranian threat, not just trying to contain the movement of arms caches to Hezbollah and immediate security threats, but he's expanded the notion of preemption into effectively annihilating the Iranian presence in Syria if possible. Mm -hmm. So this could encourage much more expansive Israeli airstrikes on Syria in the weeks and months to come, given Bennett's past rhetoric and given Bennett's uh, past policies that he's advocated as Israeli defense minister. So uh, from a humanitarian perspective, Yahya, where does the regime want to drive Dara residents? I mean, what's the end game here? We know that it's home to 40,000 people and thousands of more have fled the violence already. So where would these people go? Well, first of all, the regime doesn't care because for the past decade now, this has been the trend on the part of the regime. Killing, imprisonment, displacement, destruction, use of prohibited weapons, all these, uh, all these things are, are happening. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dara people are not an exception. 
And as you know, that uh, the Syrian revolution started from Dara, which is a very important thing for the regime. And during the late, uh, latest uh, so-called elections, uh, the uh, Dara people refused and considered that to be a, a, a stupid superficial game on the part of the regime. So that uh, um, uh, work on the part of the regime against the people of Dara is a, a trend, and continuously the, the, the regime does this. Where would they go? I, I, I would say that they would stay where they are, because enough of Syrian people have this, uh, been displaced. Yes. Uh, uh, half of the country is outside, and those people who are inside Syria want to, to leave. But there is no place for, for, for them to go. They, say, they said collectively that if, the, if, it is, if, if it, uh, this is a matter of displacement, they either should go to Jordan, yes. all of them, or go to Turkey. And I don't think that Turkey can tolerate or take more, because they have about 4,000, 4, 4 million. Yes. And also Jordan is in big trouble economically. So the regime is just playing uh, against all the interests of the people involved in the Syrian case. And that is why I, I believe that the, the, the issue will be settled in the least uh, losses possible. So now that the Samuel hostilities cease for now, how has the latest wave of violence exposed the fragility of the situation on the ground? And are things likely to get more complicated? Well, I think that it's certainly likely to be more complicated. Obviously, there's been a lot of involvement by international powers to particularly Russia in order to de-escalate the situation. So they've been trying to basically encourage the uh, rebel pockets within the resistance to surrender towards the Assad regime. And uh, some opposition sources even admitted yesterday that there were some who surrendered, but there are also some who haven't. So there could be a fracturing of the opposition, which may be the... Uh, strategy that the Assad regime and the Russians are putting forward that could add to the complications in this region. Moreover, Turkey's role as a guarantor in moving people towards northwestern Syria appears to have backfired, at least from the Russian and the Syrian perspective. Mm -hmm. So what you could be looking at is a strategic rivalry between Russia and Iran, uh, a immediate tactical rivalry between Russia and Turkey, as well as a fractured opposition, uh, and uh, Assad regime that's bent on uh, quashing all dissent and carrying, continuing its humanitarian siege in this area. So there's many, many prospects of continued violence and instability, unfortunately, not to mention the over-the-horizon threat of Israeli airstrikes or, and or an Iranian-Israeli proxy war. Yeah. So, uh, Yahya, do you see an end to this war soon? And what role could the international community play moving forward after a decade of fighting? Well... Let me just say one, one thing about uh, the South, uh, about Dara and the Russian interference there uh, as a guarantee. Yes. I, I believe that uh, Russia's credentials, Russia's reputation is at stake there. They either should, uh, uh, should declare themselves as occupiers or as mediators. Uh, they are just fluctuating between this and that. And uh, uh, do I see an end to the, to the situation? Uh, it's to the interest of the whole world and to all the parties interfering in the Syrian situation uh, to, to put an end to this saga, to this tragedy of, of, of Syrians at different levels. Yes. Now, uh, when would their interests be fulfilled? We don't know, but it is, I believe, they have started the... the uh, 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 descending in their interests, they have started to uh, to lose day after day. It, uh, the, the regime has become a real, uh, 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 I would say, uh, a liability for all of them in in yes. different things, especially for Russia. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining us on Straight Talk.